все вы знаете, недавно нас постигла беда. Авария на Чобольской атомной электростанции. On the 26th of April, 1986, at approximately 1.24 a.m., reactor number four of the Chernobyl nuclear plant Мы starts melting. Мы реально столкнулись с такой грозной силой, какой является ядерная энергия, вышедшая из-под контроля. A significant amount of radioactive material is projected for several days in the air, affecting all forms of life in a radius of 500 kilometers around the planet. 299 человек госпитализированы с диагнозом лучевой болезни разной степени тяжести. Tens of thousands of liquidators clean up radioactive waste that is scattered at the site and the surrounding areas just after the explosion. Their protections are insignificant and they are exposed to doses of lethal radiation. Most of them will die or end up disabled. Выражаю глубокое сочувствие семьям, родственникам погибших, трудовым коллективам, всем, кто пострадал от этой беды, кого постигла личная горе. An area of 30 kilometers around the plant is closed and totally drained of its 115,000 inhabitants. Chernobyl is and will remain radioactive for thousands of years. Thirty years after the disaster, what is it that drives man to come back to this contaminated land? At about an hour and a half drive from Kiev, the checkpoint Dityatki marks the entrance into the 30-kilometer forbidden zone. Access is strictly regulated, and the army controls every entrance and exit. At first glance, we see that nature is very present. In 1986, Chernobyl city had about 1,300 inhabitants, and officially today, there are none. Despite all this, grass is mowed, and houses are maintained, and you quickly forget where you are. But the devil is in the details. All is calm, almost frozen. Yet there are signs of life, attempts to make daily life more colorful and joyful. In fact, about 600 people live and sleep here in Chernobyl. Most of them are working on the building of the new sarcophagus that will soon cover the plant. They're allowed to stay for 15 days in the area, but then they must leave for the next 15 days. This is the rule in order to not exceed the radiation dose. The new water pipes were not buried in order to avoid contact with the radioactive ground. So the pipes are apparent. Sometimes you have to step over them, and sometimes they're the ones that cross over you. And all of a sudden, at certain hours, life starts up again. Cars go by, People walk home or ride their bikes. Here, combat clothes are the fashion. It's as if everyone was at war against the invisible enemy. Radioactivity in the city is near to normal. In subdivisions, homes were abandoned immediately after the disaster. 
people left everything. Some people have returned and have put their homes back in order. They furnish them and they live there, but they still follow the rule of 15 days in the area, 15 days out. In these neighborhoods, life is modest, and for a few hundred euros you can buy a small house with a garden and enjoy the tranquility of a true country house. A small community coexists, and social life is slowly growing. In 2013, a cafe opened in the heart of the city of Chernobyl. Before 1986, these premises housed a large municipal canteen. The establishment was called Canteen No. 10, and the cafe was christened Café 10. Coincidence or destiny, it's 10 kilometers from the plant. It is open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And every day, 30-some people have a drink or eat Ukrainian specialties on the menu. Several devices continuously measure radioactivity. The cafe also offer rooms worthy of a good hotel in Kiev. Sergei, the boss, made a bargain when he settled here. The cafe employs 10 people. They're all aware of the risks and have thought long and hard before coming to work here. Конечно, є. Якщо самому шукати, знайти приключення, то завжди можна десь знайти якийсь риск, що там на великій землі, що тут в зоні відчуження. Треба просто бачити, мабуть, виконувати деякі правила, які написані тут поведення тут в зоні. Тоді буде все добре. Чорнобиль – найбільш густо населене місце в Чорнобильській зоні, скажімо так. То ви – Чорнобиль. More and more tourists come eat in the cafe. They rub shoulders with the plant workers. Noon is the rush hour. The time in the zone being limited, service must be fast and efficient. This meal is an essential moment for both eating but also exchanging and preparing for the afternoon's excursion. Everyone releases stress and anxiety. Coming to Chernobyl is far from trivial. Ну, звісно, приносить, приїздять люди, яким хочеться після екскурсії такої десь посидіти в нормальній обстановці щоб було уютно, щоб люди були привітні, щоб було чисто. А в нас це єдине кафе на Чорнобилі, де можна це зробити. The cafe even has its gift shop. In the afternoon, the tourists leave Chernobyl and hit the road to the city of Pripyat. 
fresh out of Chernobyl, we must go through a new military checkpoint. We enter the 10 kilometer zone around the plant. The Red Forest. This is the name given to the 400 hectares of pines that once surrounded the plant. After the accident, the trees turned red because of the radioactive radiations. The whole forest was bulldozed and buried. Today, the new arch construction is visible from afar. It will replace the old sarcophagus and it will entirely cover the plant. The radioactivity here is alarming. In the inside of a car, it is 50 times above normal. You do not stop. Doses are much higher on the ground. A few kilometers further north, the road splits into two. A monument points to the one that leads to the city of Pripyat. One must cross the Bridge of Death. The day after the disaster, the inhabitants of the city gathered here to watch the plant burning. On this bridge, they all received lethal doses of radiation. On April 27th, 1986, at dawn, the city of Pripyat was still asleep. The white flashes visible in these images are due to radiation. The plant's been burning for over 20 hours now, and the population still doesn't know what's going on. The military rushed here, crossed by the first early risers of the population. But nothing is said. It's Sunday. People go out. Three kilometers away, helicopters hover above reactor number four. They try to extinguish the flames and limit releases of iodine, cesium, and tellurium that spread continuously in the air. Every hour, the army measures radioactivity around the city. The counters are panicking. At this rate, the lethal dose is reached within four days. Precisely 49,360 people live here. In a few hours, the lives of these people will be shattered. 1,200 buses and 200 trucks will arrive in the main square. It'll only take three and a half hours to empty the city. <laughs> The loudspeakers make the announcement. One may only take bare necessities, identification papers, change of clothing, and some food for the trip. It is forbidden to take animals. The voice on the loudspeaker says that this is a temporary evacuation. The first buses enter the city early in the afternoon. People leave their apartments and entrances of buildings are locked behind them. Some faint and others vomit. Most of them are already heavily irradiated. By late afternoon, the city is deserted. The families will be rehoused in social apartments in Kiev. They will be rejected and abused. No one wants to live near contaminated neighbors. 
Those left for three days would in fact never return. Pripyat is now completely surrounded by barbed wire, and access to the city is guarded by one man. Pripyat is now populated with trees. They grow everywhere. Most plants have adapted, and their DNA has mutated. They have many structural defects, tumors and malformations. It's not spectacular, but degeneration has become the norm. The land is less contaminated in the area, because each year... Radionuclides sink deeper into the ground. However, these plants absorb radioactive particles by their roots, which then grow to the surface. Moss, leaves, and flowers are contaminants. The Pripyat swimming pool has become one of the most visited places in the city since it appeared in a famous video game. Some come from far away just to see it for real. Built to accommodate the families of those who worked at the plant, the town provided everything one could wish for at the time. Right next to the pool, we can see the trace of an old courtyard of one of the five schools. A thousand students studied here. On the ground floor, the canteen is strangely empty. Even the heavy cast iron radiators are gone. Looters came and took everything that was valuable. A little further, hundreds of children's gas masks litter the ground. Each school had its own stock, in anticipation of a possible U.S. nuclear attack. In reality, they were never used. The looters are the ones who threw them there. Time is frozen in the corridors. The patriotic newspaper of April 23rd is still on display. In some classrooms, it feels like the day after the disaster. Sometimes realism is a bit too forced and disturbing. 
Some objects seem to have been moved and staged for tourists' photographs. The city has the most contaminated spots in the whole area, yet it attracts more and more people. In the hospital, you can still find clothes left by the liquidators on the day of the disaster. This is one of the most radioactive places in the world, yet some visit it unprotected risking exposure to lethal doses. The area is often compared to a nature reserve, thanks to the great diversity of flora and fauna that are present. Hunting and fishing are prohibited. In the little port of Pripyat, the last moored boat has almost finished sinking. It's difficult to imagine that life once swarmed here. Hundreds of people came every weekend to go sailing or picnicking. In this tavern at the water's edge, young people used to meet and flirt. Serge Dityarenko has been a guide in the area for five years. His work is his passion, but he admits that being here is also a form of fighting defeat. The Ukrainian army is fighting to keep its land and border from Russia, whereas here we are in the process of taking back soil contaminated by the former USSR. First of all, it was for me as a hobby. I organized a trip for my friends. Всем очень понравилось. После этого начали поступать запросы от иностранных компаний, и ну, это все вылилось в бизнес. И ну, моя задача это довести людям, которые сюда ездят, всю информацию про эту катастрофу, показать интересные места, вот, чтобы люди прониклись этой темой, чтобы поняли, насколько действительно это была глобальная катастрофа. Это абсолютно безопасно, так как людей сопровождает гид. И он э, показывает Чернобыльскую зону э, только ну, в безопасной зоне, скажем так. An amusement park should have been opened four days after the disaster. Yet the Ferris wheel was started the day after the explosion to keep the locals busy and avoid panic before the evacuation. It became the symbol of the city. This is the inescapable cliché. The authorities and tour operators want reassurance regarding the doses of radiation that tourists are exposed to. But nobody knows the real impact of such visits on the body. So-called black or morbid tourism is on the rise. Travel agencies have seized this opportunity. There are more and more tourists, but the former inhabitants of the city rarely want to come back. В выпадке, скажу так, что была у меня ситуация, когда мой э, сотрудник узнал, что я вожу группы в Чернобыльскую зону, сказал, что он сам с Припяти, ну, родился в Припяти. Я попросил паспорт, он показал паспорт, я говорю, хорошо, давай мы поедем с тобой. Я ему организовал поездку, и задача была найти его дом, где они жили семьей. Но он еще был очень маленький, ему 4 года всего лишь было.
И когда мы сюда приехали, мы нашли его дом, у него было ну, очень много эмоций. Он звонил своему отцу, говорил, папа, я в нашем доме. Ну, это надо было видеть, ну, насколько эмоционально был человек потрясен. Это, наверное, такой самый запоминающийся случай. Кроме того, у меня подрастают два сына, одному из них уже 13 лет, и он мечтает приезжать сюда. Возможно, я передам свои навыки, и он будет продолжать возить сюда туристов. By late afternoon, tourists who were still in the area return to the cafe. At dusk, exterior doors are locked. In the area, a curfew is in place until morning. Pripyat and Chernobyl were the two main cities, but there were also many villages. The most radioactive ones were bulldozed and buried. Those that remain are the prey of metal looters. The metal is often radioactive to the extreme, especially when it comes to tools or vehicles that were used during the liquidation. Houses and apartments have been robbed. Everywhere. Radiators, power lines, cars, and even military equipment has disappeared. Some clandestine trucks were arrested, but the majority crossed the checkpoints unmolested. Corruption is widespread, and the government says it's helpless. In 30 years, six million tons of radioactive metal have left the zone. That makes 548 tons per day. This metal goes to foundries in eastern Ukraine that are then sold on the Chinese market. The Chernobyl radioactive metal can be found today all over the world in the most ordinary objects. Only churches and memorials seem to have been spared. Looters haven't passed through this kindergarten yet. Radioactivity is still very strong. But thieves don't care. They'll come and cut every centimeter of metal without wearing any protective equipment. These men often live in precarious conditions and don't care about risking their future health. The Ukrainian generation born after the disaster perceives the situation from a different angle. Many have already come to the area, but virtually, through video games like Call of Duty or Stalker that take place around the plant and Pripyat. Elina is part of this generation. She's a translator and comes regularly to the area. Je m'appelle Elina, j'ai 23 ans, j'habite à Jutomir, c'est un petit ville à côté de Kiev. Euh, mon, mon passion, quoi, c'est français. Moi, je accompagne des groupes, des étrangers qui viennent euh, ici à Tchernobyl. Tous mes amis, ils rêvent de venir ici et première fois quand ils... Euh, Attendu que j'étais en Tchernobyl, c'était « Oh, cool, moi je rêve aussi, comment on peut y aller ?» Personne dit, personne de mon âge dit, ne dit pas que « Oh, pourquoi t'es allé T'as peur ?» Quelque chose comme ça. Les gens âgés avec lesquels je travaille, ils disent ah, « Tu peur pas d'aller là-bas, par exemple, tu penses de, de la pollution ?» Euh, tu ne tu, tu, tu dois pas aller euh, souvent, par exemple. Donc c'est différent, <rire> ça dépend de l'âge en fait. 
ça, je pense que ça dans la tête des, des gens âgés. Quoi. Ils ont passé tout ça, ils ont vu euh, des morts, et des gens malades qu'ils ont reçus, et, euh, la dose. Et les gens de mon âge, c'est juste... C'est cool de venir ici, il n'y a, a pas de gens ici, oh, Prépiade, Stalker, quelque chose comme ça. Je pense que c'est dans la tête, premièrement. The story of the drama is alive, but the emotional memory of those who lived through it gradually fades away. Ivan and his wife Maria are Samosioli. This is the name given to those who have returned to live clandestinely in the area after the disaster. Most of them are sick, and their numbers decrease from year to year. They live in near Ottaki, and when we ask them why they return to live in the Forbidden Zone, their answer is simple. Their life is here. Other Samosioli work collecting metal abandoned by the army. Whole fields of irradiated military equipment has disappeared. These men paid dearly for a few hundred dollars. Ivan never participated in the dismantling, but nevertheless, he was exposed to high doses of cesium. I Приезжают дизиметристы, меня мерят начинают. Я дивлюсь, что это уже, кажу, сколько, уже 500 на мне. Куда никогда у меня не было этого. Я говорю, да, что это, кажу, так много? Куда она взялась? Ну, я там под реактором машина была, стала по четверти. То мне по грозе, она загрузила, так мне там ее трохи выкачивали, чтобы завести. И раз то, что я ее чувствовал. Я крепку радиацию чувствую. Когда я обгорел, uh -huh. я только почувствовал, что уже в губе пошли сокти. Сразу забрался и пошел. Uh -huh. уже, уже тут меня нема чего делать. Потому что сейчас, если побудешь, голову закрутить, и погано уже uh -huh. я, я чувствую ее. Вот, вот, вот бывает, проходишь, вот тут наскочил на ее. Сразу. В губе посохли, все. А в губе же новые поросли. Такой тоди. Уже чувствую. И я таким путем туда не шел, где она была. А бог что возьму, я сразу чувствую. The human body does not adapt to radiation as easily as nature. The most resistant animals are insects. And even though many of them died in the beginning, they've gradually adapted. In some species, close to 60 generations have passed, while man is still in his first. If some animals in the area have grown to impressive sizes, it is only because of the absence of humans. A 
among the regulars of the area. Misha is a regular customer at the cafe. He works for the city of Chernobyl and allows access to the different sites. Every day, we have to go here. 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 Той населений пункт, в якому я родився, в якому я проживав до п'яти років, нас просто переселили в 94-му році. Тим паче я працюю по спеціальності. У мене стаж іде год за півтора, так як я працюю в особливо шкідливих умовах праці. У нас є доплати за те, що ми також тут працюємо. Спочатку було трошки дивно. Людей не так багато, хоча я взагалі не очікував, що тут буде стільки людей. Я думав, що таке Чорнобильська зона – це якийсь ліс. Огорожена територія, ходять солдати з автоматами, охороняють територію. А на самом, як з'ясувалося, це зовсім по-іншому. І людей працює побільше. Умови в нас нормальні. Є спортзали, магазини, міліція, навіть ДАІ, прокуратура, СБУ, все. Моніторинг проводиться радіаційний. Централізовані підприємства по поводженню з радіоактивними відходами. Все нормально, нормальний спосіб життя, але тільки що нема дітей, нема школ. Це якби чуть-чуть так воно дивно, але звик до цього. Пристосувався і мене зараз абсолютно все влаштовує. Despite the reassuring speech of the authorities concerning radioactivity in the city, the 30-kilometer zone is strictly prohibited for pregnant women and children under the age of 18. Уже нічого на мене не шокує. Поначалу шокувало, сама станція, сам вигляд, як мене на її заїжджали, як почав до зими терпіщати. Так, поначалу це було трошки стрьомно, скажімо так. А потім я звик, просто я знаю, як з цим... Як себе потрібно поводити, я знаю норми, правила. Якщо їм чітко слідувати, все буде нормально. The Lenin plant lies between Chernobyl and Pripyat. It is the heart of all concerns. The old sarcophagus, hastily built around the remains of reactor number four, is no longer sealed. Some gaps are large enough to drive a car through them. Recently, the building structure became unstable and scaffolds were built to prevent its collapse. To delay the threat, a gigantic arch is under construction. It is mobile and will cover the entire plant. For the moment, it is impossible to decontaminate and treat highly radioactive substances present in reactor number four. The arc is expected to last a hundred years. From now on, we must invent, fund and implement an eventual solution. Novarka, a consortium between the Buig and Vinci companies, is the firm in charge of the work. It employs between 1,000 and 1,200 people each day on the site. For people in the region, these job offers are a fantastic opportunity. Their health is not their priority. <laughs> Ну, конечно, да. В 5 утра подъем и приезжаешь там в 8 часов вечера, то есть поел и спать. У меня жена и я с Припяти, вот мы видели, как этот реактор горел. То есть все нормально. До сих пор живые. Как-то так. Since the year 2000, all engines have stopped. But people are still working right inside the plant. There is around the clock surveillance. At 10 meters high, a gigantic corridor that is over one kilometer long goes through the entire length of the building. It's called the Golden Corridor. It leads to the strategic places of the plant. At the end of the corridor lies the terrible reactor number four that exploded. 
The equipment used in construction seems surprisingly rudimentary. Most doors and door frames are made out of wood, and the mosaic floor moves and falls apart when you walk on it. The Lenin plant was nevertheless known to be one of the safest and most modern of the former USSR. Despite the dangers, the plant was kept in business after the disaster. The decision to completely shut it down was only made in December 2000. The other reactors had become too threatening. It is from post number four, identical to this one, that operators handled the situation 30 years ago. We now know that the center had some design flaws, but if the explosion occurred, it is because of human error. Chernobyl is not unique. The oldest plant of this type is located in Leningrad, Russia. And we discovered that in 1975, a similar incident had occurred. The accident was less important than here. There are still 10 plants using this style of technology worldwide. The equipment is completely outdated, and the situation is distressing. The real wealth of the plant are the people working there. They have devoted themselves body and soul, waiting for the arrival of the new sarcophagus. The chief operating officer of reactor number two has been working at the plant for 28 years. He's Russian, and his colleagues are Ukrainian. The common goal being primarily to prevent another tragedy. То есть никто нас насильно сюда тогда не толкал в Советском Союзе. То есть это мы я вот например по распределению поехал. Нам дали время, нам дали время подумать. Ну пускай будет так. Ну и ну это все там в комплексе, в комплексе. Это комплекс. Это был Советский Союз. Это был Советский Союз, в принципе. Да нет, ну не гуманизм. Ну мы же атомщики, то есть мы это в принципе, мы специалисты. Поэтому нет, нет, нет. То есть у нас как бы будем так говорить, то есть. Постоянный цикл, поэтому мы люди должны быть, поэтому мы работаем сменами. Опять как оперативно. Самый оптимальный, самый лучший график у нас на Чернобыльской есть самый лучший график для оперативного персонала. Самый оптимальный. Вы не боитесь здесь работать? Нет. Опыт работы тут умноженный на знания. Позволяет, позволяет нам да работать. Без боязни. Скажи, у них же тоже во Франции работа на этом основании. Там же люди тоже не боятся. Если вы, если вы имеете тут э, сам Чернобыльскую, Чернобыльскую атомную станцию, то, в принципе, это такая же эксплуатация. Единственное, что не отдельно есть нюансы. Эти нюансы мы просто знаем, чисто технические. Вот и все. Но туристы же ходят в музеи, так что, в принципе, то есть, я думаю, что это нормально. В принципе, люди должны знать, что это такое. Что такое атомная станция, к чему это может привести, если, допустим, не дай бог, что-нибудь не так сделать. Поэтому это нормально. Все, удачи вам. The authorized dose for nuclear workers is 20 times higher than for an ordinary citizen. If we go deeper into the core of the plant, towards reactor number four, the passage suddenly darkens. The corridor is narrow and damp. The walls are peeling. The dosimeters are creaking continuously. In the cooling air passages between reactors three and four, most accesses have been processed. Yet radioactivity is extremely variable, and where the worn-off linoleum exposes the concrete floor, the measures are very high. This big white wall is the sarcophagus built after the disaster. 
A memorial has been erected in honor of Valérie Kodemchuk, the first victim of the explosion. Here, radioactivity in the air is 16 microsieverts, in other words, 160 times above normal. Behind this red door, less than 20 meters away, is a corium, also called elephant foot. This is a highly toxic and radioactive magma. It destroys everything in its path. Its temperature of 2,500 degrees does not decrease in contact with air. It will remain radioactive for 250,000 years. It kills all those who approach it in less than five minutes. Before exiting the plant, one must pass a security checkpoint that measures radiation. But is the machine really working? The guide says it hasn't beeped in 30 years. A wall in memory of the liquidators was built just outside the entrance of the enclosure. Between 600,000 and 800,000 people have worked to decontaminate the site. They were volunteers and considered that their involvement was part of their duty. Without them, the Chernobyl disaster would have severely contaminated all of Europe. In the end, 250,000 people were evacuated and hundreds of villages were wiped off the map. Tonight, there's no curfew in Chernobyl. Once a year, the city lets the liquidators' families come in for a few hours. They all lost someone and are often sick themselves. Emotions are contradictory. We're guilty for surviving, but happy to still be alive. The families of the survivors have rebuilt their lives outside the area. Radiation has affected their health and that of their young children. But what about the next generations? In Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine, doctors have found dramatic increases of malformations, leukemia, and cancer in children born just after the disaster. Even today, many cases of malformations are detected. They affect the vital functions of newborns and are more difficult to detect. Thirty years have passed, and man is back in Chernobyl. When we start leaving the zone, the café appears to be the first step towards reclaiming contaminated soil. What could be more reassuring than a simple café to imagine that we could live here like anywhere else in the world. We can now work, sightsee, have a drink with friends, or enjoy a country house in Chernobyl. The explosion of the plant had terrible human, ecological, and also economic consequences for Ukraine. In 2011, Ukrainian president Viktor Yanukovych declared that he wants to resume farming on irradiated land, even within the prohibited zone. The undeveloped area is the size of a country like Luxembourg. In addition, 
the United Nations launched a development and rehabilitation program for the affected areas of Chernobyl. A new step has been taken. So we will perhaps soon have irradiated products from Chernobyl in our food chain.